this might be a tough decision right now. My team Boy, did just absolutely some garbage. NFL games that were like, right. whoa. I actually don't have a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, welcome to Scrum Tone. Uh, we have another guest here on the League of the Wings. The League of the Wings. The League of the Wings. Hey, this Gruntold. Um, we're here with Antonio and Logan. Last year, I interviewed them both separately, but I thought it would be a good idea to have them both on since they're big, big Eagle fans to talk about. Just kind of recapping the Eagle season and what we kind of just thought about as a whole and some maybe predictions that we think next year, what we think the Eagles are going to do and kind of what we're going to do with the three first-round draft picks that we have. So I guess, what did you guys think of the Eagles season last year. Do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I can go ahead. Um, right. So, yeah, I, I I, thought it went well. I thought there was a lot of promising things that happened. Definitely, uh, I would say, overperformed my expectations, which I thought was good. A lot of progress from players I wanted to see progress from. I saw, you know, the draft picks from last year not be complete dookie for once. <laughs> which was nice um and yeah i from what i saw i think there's a lot of hopeful things to look forward to next year building off of what they did this year so good things to come hopefully yeah i think they exceeded a lot of people's expectations because i think everyone was having them at like <laughs> two and 15 or like four four five and 11 or six six and 11 with an extra game i guess but Getting into the playoffs is very, very big for a team that was supposed to be in last place. Right. And, uh, yeah, with the run game and everything. But their their performances, honestly, I, I thought they performed well. And, yeah, people were not expecting much and giving them a bunch of crap about how bad they were going to be this year. I, I don't think they were bad. I think a lot of people would agree it was fun to watch. What do you think, Otenia? Yeah, I think they did a lot better than I expected to because normally – before the each season I do like a record prediction the two seasons ago I had the Eagles going like 11 and 5 and I was like way off so I told myself I wasn't going to do a record prediction before last season and um I was just happy to see that um they were able to be the best at something they had the number one rushing offense and um I was happy to see Nick Sirianni do well because a lot of people made fun of him they thought he would be a terrible coach. Even Jalen Hurts, I thought he had a good season too. Yeah, especially in the run game too. And I think he just like, next to Ariane, I think everyone was just goofy on him because I don't know, like he just seems like a very like goofy guy when during like the OTAs, during the preseason, like preseason, like all the practice, training camp, etc. It's just like goofy around and his interview style was kind of different from everyone else's but I'm glad I'm glad to see that he's building good chemistry because I don't know like I feel like those types of coaches are really good for building team chemistry where as like a Bill Belichick is kind of more strict and I know that he he had the most wins out of all the first year head coaches too oh wow I did not know that at all that's really good that's really, really yeah good. yeah I didn't know that either but even with like Sirianni too I think the team is so young and I think that's what I thought was the most the most promising to see out of this past season, except for like the O line for the most part. It seems pretty young. So yeah, I'm getting a little worried about the offensive line because like Jason Kelsey. I mean, he's been doing this like year year in and year out that he's like teasing that he's going to retire, but then he doesn't. But like we don't know where he's going. And then with Brandon Brooks just retiring, I mean Lane Johnson. We don't know what he's going to do. He's getting up there in age, and. Mm. It's like a whole, like one of the best offensive lines, like in history, I believe. Like we got like at least one or two, or even I think we got three Hall of Famers on that offensive line with those three, Lane Johnson, Brendan Brooks, and Jason Kelsey. It's just a shame that we're going to lose them and that they only got one Super Bowl out of it. Yeah. So you, you never know. They're all coming back at least one more year. That is true. And also – um. Last season, they signed Jordan Mulata to that contract extension, too. I think it's for, like, four years. That's a – I am I was really happy that they did that because he's a beast. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really hyped that we got him back. And it's, like, kind of a Cinderella story almost, too, because, like, he's coming out of rugby. 
uh, like from Australia rugby playing there and then now he's had that he had a contract and yeah I just I still remember like when he did that like kick thing like when he first started to like play he did like that kick out thing that moved to like slide to the right I don't know if you guys remember that but yeah I remember seeing like videos when he played rugby and he was just like destroying people he was like running them over and stuff it's just crazy that he's as good as he is considering he never played football before I agree I agree I'm pretty he's sure a... he was a seventh round pick too yeah that makes it even more crazy mm-hmm. he was a steal now yeah now he's seen as a steal at least because yeah he had a big year I forget exactly what his rankings were but I want to say he was a top five or at whatever whatever stat I saw like in the league which is really good so and it's funny because I saw like fans of other teams making fun of the Eagles for giving him that extension but they don't know how good he is and how much better he can still be yeah, it kind of sucks about that position because if you're not like in the top three offensive line, then you kind of get like, I don't know, you don't really get paid attention to, which kind of sucks because like like you said, he's a, a really great offensive lineman. What are your guys' biggest disappointment, disappointments for this year or this past year? Um, I can go. I, I mean, I thought the defense was disappointing at times. I can't really point out any exact positions from like game to game, but it always seemed like there, every game there was always something that wasn't quite working quite right. So yeah, the defense was not consistent enough. And of course, Jalen Rager was very disappointing. I'm not a, I'm not a Jalen Rager hater or anything. I really hope he grows his potential this next year, but, but this year I, I was hoping he'd make a big second year jump and he, he did not. So yeah, that was disappointing to see. I've been seeing so many memes about him, and I, I feel bad for the guy. So yeah, I wanted I wanted to see the Jalen Rager like succeed this year because like we got him for a first round pick, but he just like ended up going down downhill. I mean, he was kind of already heading in that direction a year before that, but this year he just took a very huge dive and not really what we wanted to see out of a first round receiver. And also, the uh, playoff game performance was very disappointing. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. That didn't look like Eagles football for like the ten weeks prior to that. So. Yeah, I just don't know how much. I don't. I just don't know how much that is too of us playing bad teams and then facing like a playoff team because it's, I think we went. I I forget the statistic, but we were destroying like non-playoff teams, but lost to like all the playoff team. He went into the playoffs. Like I think we went like zero and seven amongst like, playoff teams this year and manage to get, like, most of our wins from non-playoff teams. Right. Yeah, it was a tough matchup, for sure. I think Miles Sanders is the biggest, like, disappointment, or one of the biggest disappointments for me, at least, because even though he was, like, in and out, he was very injury-prone, which I didn't really think he was this year. And he, he, he didn't score a touchdown this year. I think he <laughs> led, like, all back. Because he had all those yards but zero touchdowns. That's had to be one of the crazier stats from last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it, it was like him and then like everyone else, like with attempts and like yards. I think he like tripled the next person on that list with like the most attempts and most yards without a touchdown by any of the um, running backs. I forget what game I saw that. And I think it was like one of the last last games of the season. But it's just crazy. Right. When he was on the field, I didn't think he was disappointing. I thought he played pretty decent. But, yeah, it just sucks to see him on the bench all the time. And I felt so bad for him because he got injured in that Raiders game. And, like, before he got injured, he was actually running the ball really well in that game. And now that's when the Eagles started to run the ball more, too, and got injured. Yeah, it kind of sucks because, like, he was averaging, like – nine nine carries or less I remember one game he only had like two attempts before that Raiders game and and then of course once they decided to actually run the ball and get like break records or like first in the league rush up to first in the league then they started to run which is fucking annoying yeah it's crazy because they didn't start running the ball until towards the middle of the season it makes you wonder how good the stats could have been if they would have ran it like that a few games sooner. Right, could have gotten an extra win or two. 
most definitely because like we shot up to number one and even when people knew that we were running offense a running style offense comparatively to passing like we're still running over like teams left and right like it it only I only remember like one bad game that we had where we didn't run good I think it was like the last game of the season or one of the last games of the season or it might have been the Bucks game I forget but we just ran terribly and I don't know I just feel like that would be really cool if we could keep that momentum going into the next season it would oh. be good if the Eagles could still run the ball really well like they did this past season but get better in the past game too because they have to get a lot better in the past game because I think a big issue in the playoff game was the Buccaneers stopped the run game and the Eagles couldn't do anything in the passing game. Yeah, that's my biggest worrying going into next season because Jalen Hurts has like all the intangibles to like be a really good quarterback in this league. But the biggest issue that he has is the accuracy. And once you get him flustered, he, he's just going to resort to running the ball. And once you can, like, block that up, then he, he's bit pretty easy to stop. And that's exactly how, like, the Buccaneers stopped Jalen Hurts. It's just crazy to see. It's just crazy to see that um, how inaccurate he is, but everyone kind of, like, hyping him up. Well, I guess rightfully so. But, yeah, I just want to see more improvement with his accuracy and kind of his um, – he doesn't really throw the ball in the middle. His act, like I feel like he doesn't really see the ball as well or like down the field a lot. But if he works on those two, then I want, then I think he's going to be an Eagle for a long time. But I just, I think he has like one more year left on the Eagles or the next year is probably his like defining year. And if he does bad, worse, or he doesn't even get better, then I think we're moving on from him. Yeah, I really hope that he can develop and get at least one more season with the Eagles and they have the assets to get a different quarterback too so they're in a good spot mm -hmm. what do you guys think on possibly getting Russell Wilson because there's some like trade rumors about us potentially trading for him since we have John Hurts and those three round first picks I'd honestly really like that because I'm a big Russell Wilson fan he's been one of my favorite players for a long time he's, he's a He's a really good quarterback, obviously, but he's a really good person, too. And I still think he's like a top 10 quarterback. And it's crazy the numbers he's put up behind like bad offensive lines every season with the Seahawks. Just imagine like how good he could be on the Eagles behind their offensive line. Right. I, you know, I, I think it'd be interesting for sure. I, I personally wouldn't want him to come in because I just think he's too similar to Jalen Hurts. Like, because they can both run the ball pretty well. But obviously, Russell is – I think he's very underrated. And his – especially deep passing ability is incredible. I just think he's – for his age, I think he's going to be very expensive. And I don't know if our team had – if the Eagles have what he's going to need to be able to make it to the Super Bowl right away, which I – at that point, I just don't know if it's really worth it. I think you can kind of mold Hurts into being – Hopefully, Russell Wilson, if you can just train his arm and vision a little bit better. So Yeah, I want I want her to be on the Eagles for a long time, and I, that would be really nice with Russell Wilson, but I just think – I don't think it would be worth I, – I, I would love Russell Wilson, but I just don't think it would be worth because I think we would have to get a trade Jalen Hurts plus, like, two first-round picks. But if we're able to get a deal <laughs> where we wouldn't have – where we wouldn't spend that much, I don't know – I don't even think that would be possible, but I, I don't know. Howie Roseman is a genius when it comes to that. If somehow we could get Russell Wilson for cheap and still have a couple first-round picks in the future, I mean, I would love it. Um, but I just don't know how long, like you said, Logan, how long we would actually have him for or how long he would actually want to play in the season or play, how long he would want to play with the Eagles. Like, if he's just going to retire in a couple of years or stay for another five. Um, but, yeah, he was one of the reasons why I kind of bandwagoned the Seahawks when they went to the Super Bowls back-to-back -back years. Um, but what about Aaron Rodgers? What if we got him, like, on a two-year contract or something? Contract. I don't know about that one. I don't I don't think I'd like that. No, I, I, I think there's too much drama around yeah. him. 
I mean, obviously he's very, very good to tell her what two MVPs in a row, but uh, yeah, he's just <laughs> very expensive and he's old and drama. And yeah, I, I don't think he'd want to come here anyway. I don't know if that's been official or not yet, but I I'm sure he doesn't want to come here. So. I do think he'll leave the Packers. I think he's going to go to the Broncos. That's that's the team I think he's going to go to. Yeah, my one roommate. They have a pretty good roster already. Like, they have some weapons and stuff, and they have a good defense. So I could see him going there. Yeah, and my, my one roommate, uh, Trey, he's a huge Bronco fan, and he's, like, they're talking about Rodgers coming to, like, the Broncos, and he's like he was absolutely livid. And I think that's the best spot, too, with what you said with, like, the defense and kind of how they're being built. But it's also, like, in Colorado, and I feel like Aaron Rodgers is really going to, like, the stonier, stoner-y type of person where he would just thrive in Colorado. For that same reason, I feel like you, he'd be a good fit Miami, too. I could see that happening. Yeah, yeah. Be a good um, team for him. Yeah, I, I, I saw a couple of rumors too, and I absolutely like love this like kind of trade, <laughs> trade rumor. Um, is the Devonte Adams too? I saw that we were kind of looped in with Adams, um, and I think, I mean, I, I would personally would want to like get him for like one or two first round picks. Like I would, I would trade two first round picks for Devonte Adams because I'd Devontae- easily do that. Yeah, and Devontae, he's the best receiver in the league. And with Devontae Smith, too. Like, Devontae Smith was, like, saying how he wanted a veteran on the team and wanting the Eagles to, like, get someone. So that will be hella nice with the two. That would be so scary with Dallas Goddard, too. Adams is a free agent, isn't he? So don't you, you don't have to trade picks for him, right? Don't you just have to pay him? Oh, wait, I forgot about that. Yeah, isn't that how that works? I think so. But, yeah, I mean, I, he'd be very expensive and nice to have, but unless we get Rodgers, I don't, I don't know if he's gonna come here. I don't know if he's gonna separate from him. That is true. But it, yeah, it would it, even the fact that you probably wouldn't have to use picks on him, from what I understand, would be very nice too, because he'd make you take a lot of picks, like you said, probably two first rounders. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very like exciting free agency this year. Yeah, I just thought that this year was just like. Very interesting to watch. Um, what do you guys think about Devontae Smith's first season as an Eagle? I thought it was really good. I saw people like trying to compare him to like Jamar Chase and stuff, but it's like completely different because the Bengals are pass first offense and the Eagles are rush first offense. So um Smith didn't get as many targets as like Jamar Chase did. And Smith still had good numbers. And he was open a lot, too, and he didn't get the ball. Yeah, no, I, I thought he was very promising, too. Like I said earlier, I, it was nice to see a couple early picks not be complete garbage. So he, it'll be nice to see what he can do the next two years, especially if he gets a, another target on that offense that will take some attention away from him and he can get more open and hopefully get better. Yeah, I absolutely loved his season, too. And – like, it's just, just frustrating, too, with John Hurts because, like, what you said, Antonio, with, like, him getting open, there was, like, he was open with the Giants when we lost to the Giants the first game. When fucking Hurts threw it to Rager for the second time, like, Smith Smith was wide open on that time. And I'm pretty sure he had, like, Smith open for the Buccaneers game, too. And he just underthrew him. So, like, if... Jalen Hurts just gets better at, like, his accuracy, like we said earlier, than him, Hurts, and Smith are going to be, like, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase because Jamar Chase also has Joe Burrow throwing the ball to him. So that's, like, that's a lot better quarterback throwing the ball to him. So, of course, he would um, get the ball more and have more targets and have more receiving receptions um, comparatively to Devontae Smith. But... Once Hertz gets better, I can see Smith having like a 1500 yard like season, 10 plus touchdowns. Like I can easily see that in the next five years if he can just, if Hertz can just get consistent enough with it. I was so mad watching that Buccaneers game because Smith only had like one or two targets in the first half. Like the Eagles, they were throwing the ball to everyone except Smith. 
And then they threw it to him more in the second half. And I remember he had like this one crazy catch and he just like ran through so many players and got all these yards. It's so nice finally having like a good receiver because I feel like we just had a wide receiver plague for the last like decade and a half. Like our last 1,000 yard receiver was I think like Jeremy Macklin when he was on the team and that was like forever ago. And I was hoping Smith would actually get up to that 1,000 yard mark, but it's nice to see that he broke Deshaun Jackson's record for the most receiving yards by or uh, team team record, team franchise record for most receiving yards, but very prom- promising within Smith. I hope he yeah. spends his whole career with the Eagles. Yeah, so do I. It's, um, you know, the Super Bowl year, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I would assume that Alshon and um, Aguilar probably got 1,000 or close to it. And the fact that that was like their ceiling – and I felt like this year, like Devontae definitely did not look like that was the ceiling. So I think he can be potentially great, which is good to see. I agree. And I was I was so mad too with Fulgham because I thought Fulgham was going to be like the next guy or like one of like the top. Like I didn't necessarily think he was going to be a number one receiver, but I mean a good two or three like Greg Ward. And it was disappointing to see them him not even make it to the practice squad. But it, like it Again, like, that's just a fresh air because with Smith, it's definitely not his season. And I'm just happy that we actually got a good receiver that's actually promising and not as, like, a like a fucking um, bust like Jaron Rager was. And Quest yeah. Watkins, he's a pretty good receiver, too. Mm-hmm. He had a pretty good season. Like, he's a really good, like, third or fourth receiver. Like, he was making some crazy catches. Too. I want him. I want to see him get the ball more too. I just saw the stat yesterday. He only had like one drop this year. Really? Which is, yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, I, I like Quez a lot too. I think if the Eagles can get a free agent wide receiver and if Rager gets any better this year, I mean, I think they got a real, a real good looking wide receiver core. I yeah, they just need like one or two more good receivers, and then I think that will improve the whole wide receiver. Mm-hmm. This is a very young receiver squad. What other like what, what other receivers do you think the Eagles should get? That's like pretty reasonable. That wouldn't cost too much. Because I saw uh, Clark Jr. from the Jaguars that the Eagles were looking at him, and a couple other guys that I forget the name of. But who would you guys want for during this off season to for the Eagles to chase? I I really want to either see Mike Williams or Chris Godwin. I I would love to see Chris Godwin come in because I. I didn't realize how young he was. I mean, he's not young, but I don't know why I thought he was, I thought he was old. And I mean, pretty much every year since he's been in the league, he's been very solid. The only reason why I like Mike Williams better is just because he's huge and he'd also be a lot cheaper. Either of them I would like to see. DJ Chark from the Jags, and I, I don't think he's consistent enough. I mean, I like him. I think he's a good receiver, has potential as well, but. I'd like to see Williams or Godwin for sure. Most definitely. I saw Calvin Ridley too in the mix. And I mean, if if he didn't, if, I don't know, like, I don't want this to sound like bad or whatever, but like, if he didn't have like mental problems or mental strings or anxiety that he was dealing with last year, I would, that would be my top pick. Cause like, he's, he's super young. He's super fast. He can get open and stuff, but it, Philadelphia is a brutal place to play in and if you're if you're having trouble mentally um uh, I don't it was probably not football related his struggles um and it may have been um football related too but Philadelphia if if he plays bad then that's just going to add on to it and I feel like if he doesn't really do well mentally he's not going to last long Mm -hmm. as a Philadelphia Eagle and yeah well, just to add on to that, I remember we talked about it one time we were playing Xbox, but uh, I liked Ridley a lot too, but I didn't realize how old he was. He's like 32 or something now, and he is good, and I would love to have him, but I just didn't realize how old he was compared to like Godwin especially. Like I had the two flip up. I would have thought Godwin was like 32 and Ridley was like 26, but yeah. But, it, but it's the opposite. 
And yeah, I'm also uh, Ridley's off the field issues are also a little concerning. So that's another reason why I wouldn't want him anymore. Because I originally, I think I told you that I originally did want him and I did see a lot of other people want him too. I remember our conversation. That's why I brought it up. I was like, I remember us having this before. But yeah, it's just, I, I hope the Eagles make a move. I feel like they usually do one big move every single year. And I hope it's like big, big, like kind of like the Carson Wentz trade fiasco. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, would. Um, I think Chris Godwin would be a really good player to sign. Like even if he wants like a big contract, I think the Eagles should give it to him because then he could be the wide receiver one for a while. And he might want to be the wide receiver one because of the, on the Buccaneers, they have um Mike Evans and some other guys too. He might want to go to another team and be the number one receiver plus Tom Brady retired so you don't know who's going to be the quarterback for the Buccaneers yeah I feel like you got him was is definitely wanting the hell out of Tampa Bay so I, I honestly don't see like I feel like the Bucs are just going to be a dumpster fire and crash very fast without Tom Brady next year and who's ever on that team I feel like it's just going to leave or disperse and I feel like majority of the team or majority of the players on that team kind of just were there due to um Tom Brady yeah it was like a one-year super squad I think they're going to be mediocre next season kind of like what happened with the Saints how like the Saints were really good and then like this past season they were like mediocre after Drew Brees retired yeah yeah that's what sucks about these veteran quarterbacks like when you sign them like to a two-year deal or they're going to retire in the next couple of years like it's basically a Super Bowl or bust kind of year if you get that kind of veteran quarterback and that reminded me of like Philip Rovers like going to the Colts and stuff and they didn't they didn't make it too far into the playoffs but it's crazy how the league is kind of set up like that where um one one player basically puts you over the top and Basically, you can win Super Bowls over that. I had a bunch of questions lined up, but I've, I'm blanking on most of them. But what what do you guys want to see the Eagles do with the uh, three first round draft picks? Like, would you guys want want them, or would you guys want the Eagles to keep them and see what they can do in the draft, or do you think we should trade trade all of them to get players, or what do you guys think? that we should do with these three first round picks. Cause I feel like I'm flopping back and forth of what I want the Eagles to do. I think that they should um keep two of them and trade the other for like a player or for another pick next season. But I'd be very surprised if they actually used all three first round draft picks. I think they're going to trade one of them. Yeah. I, uh, I agree with that. I, what I would like to see is them get a, wide receiver and free agency so they don't have to use a pick on that and then I would like to see them have all three and if anything I wouldn't mind seeing them trade one of the three for a, another first rounder next year but I at least want to see them have two in the first round this year yeah I I think so too um too bad like none of them were like top 10 because Howie Roseman I feel like is the best dr- uh, picker of players in the top 10 I mean I guess you can't really go wrong in the, with a top 10 draft pick but um I just feel like he does really well he drafted I think Lane Johnson Fletcher Cox Devontae Smith all in the first round and a few others are in the top 10 yeah I just don't I feel like I I feel like he's kind of iffy on the like top 15 and or below or below the top 15 like between 15 and 32, I feel like he kind of sucks, but I, I I think I have good faith in him. They can actually draft well, but it kind of sucks though too, because at one point we had like back-to-back draft picks within the top 10. And I'm pretty sure at one moment we had like all three of our first round draft picks in the top 10 with us from what we got with the Colts, um, how they performed and then the, the Dolphins pick that we had. So it's kind of a shame. But what did you what do you guys think of the entire Carson Wentz situation with how he's kind of being handled with the Colts currently? It's just sad to see because like 
I was happy when the trade happened because I thought it would be really good for him and for the Eagles. But um, it's just sad to see, like, how that's gone. Like, I thought he was going to have, like, a really good season. It was kind of just, like, average. And now it seems like everyone's, like, blaming him and stuff for how the season ended. And I don't think that's fair. So, I don't know. I just hope the Colts keep him and he has a really good season next season. Right. I Just looking at, like, his stat lines and stuff from this year, I definitely don't think he's deserving of all the trade accusations and stuff that are going on with him right now. I uh, That last game was obviously really bad, and they didn't get off to a very good start. But, I mean, I his TD interception ratio was literally almost a four, which is, like, unbelievable. I mean, he didn't – he fumbled a decent amount. Had an average amount of yards. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he – I think he definitely deserves another year. Indianapolis, I mean, I don't know what else he would do with him. I think he's much better than being a backup. And, I, yeah, this year I really don't think he played that bad, to be completely honest. So, And I don't even think it's, like, really realistic for the Colts to get rid of him because he has that big contract, so they can't just cut him or they would owe him, like, a bunch of money. So I'd like to see the Colts, like, add, like, a true wide receiver one and see how he does. I feel like he kind of got thrown into the same situation that he was with the Eagles, like bad offensive line and like even shittier like wide receivers too. So, I mean, I think he had a really good season. Like it's it's crazy that they're considering him to trade. You guys hit on all the points that I was like thinking too. Like I just, I'm just was absolutely ups- like shocked when I heard like all these like trade rumors and stuff. Cause like, Give him, give the man at least another year and then start considering thinking about that. Don't do it on the first year. When you brought up the four, the touchdown ratio, Logan, with it being almost four two, I was like, wait a second. I remember he went 27 and seven. I remember seeing that stat with the Instagram page that, or the Instagram post that you sent me or earlier last week. But that just reminded me for some reason, like, he always ends up with seven interceptions every year. Like four out of the four out of his six seasons, he had seven interceptions. He had like three straight seven interception seasons with the Eagles and his last one with the Colts. But it's like weird how his stats are almost similar. Like his first year with the Eagles, he went 16 touchdowns and 14 in- interceptions. Then he had he went 33 and 7, 21 and 7, 27 and 7. And then his worst year with the Eagles, he went 16 and 15, which is very similar to the first his rookie year. And then he went 27 and 7 again. So he went 27 and 7 twice in his career. I just I don't know why, but like that's just like absurd, like little stat that I keep seeing from him. Like he's consistently good. And I just I don't I don't know why. People are just Carson Wentz haters. Yeah, I think a lot of people think that he throws a bunch of interceptions, but he doesn't. The issue with him is the fumbles. He fumbles a lot, but he doesn't throw a ton of interceptions like a lot of people think. Yeah, I thought this past season on the Colts was very comparable to pretty much every other year. He was with the Eagles, except for his last one, which at that point, I think a lot of people easily say that he was a top 15 QB in the league. I mean, I, I think his last year at the Eagles is still in everyone's mind. And I think that's why they're giving him a bunch of crap and talking about how bad he is. But I mean, this year he literally, I said, I think I sent this to you too, Caleb. He had a QB rating higher than Josh Allen. And people think he's like one of the best players in the NFL. So I don't get how you can make an argument to get rid of him that quickly. And it's not like there's even better options out there for the Colts. Like, the free agent quarterbacks, there's, like, no good ones that are better than Wentz. Right, and the draft class sucks, so. Yeah, and then you would have to, like, any quarterback avail- available for trade would be hella expensive, too, and they would have to give up a bunch of first round and capital just to obtain another quarterback, and that would be absolutely insane, like, coaching or decision from the GM to do that back-to-back years to spend a crap ton on a quarterback that, you know, may or may not work. Um, 
but it's just no. it's just sad sorry sorry i i yeah i was just feeling it, finishing up my thought there yeah i was just gonna say too that they, we have their first round pick too so if like they really either they get someone in free agency which the free agency quarterbacks aren't great and if they do trade for someone like rogers who isn't a free agent i don't believe um, he, uh, then I mean, he's trading for them. That's going to require a lot of picks. And I mean, that's where Wilson and Rogers come in, but they can't afford them. So they need a free agent, but they all stink. So I think same with Wentz is definitely the way to go. I agree. Um, and another li- little side thing too, I just wanted to bring up, like, I just wanted to say congratulations to um, Dick Vermeer, our old, like one of our, old head coaches just got into the hall of fame a couple of weeks ago. So, I mean, I think that's like back-to-back seasons too, where, or two of the last three seasons where some, an Eagle player or a coach went into the hall of fame, which is pretty cool to see that. Um, I don't know, old Eagle players yeah, think, and old Eagle staff. I think like last year um, was Randall Cunningham that got elected to the hall of fame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do remember that actually. Yeah. Did he get in or was he just? Yeah, he got in. Oh, okay. So, wait, I think I forgot about that. I think it may be three years in a row because uh, Harry Carmack, Carmichael, the receiver, I think, was 2020. So, I remember yeah. seeing that. I guess we can, just to wrap this up soon, is what do you guys, I guess we can do, like, way too early predictions, but what do you guys think the Eagles are going to do um, next season? They're going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. You can have an undefeated season. Oh, my God, that would be so perfect. Blow out the Cowboys twice. Yes, sir. That would be ideal. Um, you know, I I do think there's a lot, of, lot to be hopeful for next year. I think if they can get hurt to progress even a little bit in his arm for next season, I think they have – the opportunity to get that wide receiver in free agency. The draft is actually pretty good for the positions that the Eagles need this year. So I think they can get a lot better. And uh, they, I mean, they made the playoffs last year. So, I mean, I think if they draft well, Hurts gets a little better, maybe get three more wins. That'll get them definitely into the playoffs and hopefully they can play a better playoff game. But I expect it to be exciting. I think yeah, I'm really excited about what they can do this off season because they have all those draft picks. They actually have some money to spend. They didn't have that much money to spend last off season, and they still signed some mm-hmm. solid players. So I'm excited to see which players they sign this off season and who they draft. Wait, I just I'm, I have a couple more questions real quick. Um, sorry, uh, but what who do you think we're going to pick in the um draft or not? It doesn't have to be like player, but like what position do you think we're going to pick and? Who, what position should we go after in the draft? I, I think they should use most of them on defense because they really have to get some younger players on defense, especially the defensive line, because they only have like two or three defensive ends. And on um, Brandon Graham's getting older and they can't just rely on Josh Sweat. So I hope they use a first round pick on a defensive end. And then definitely like a cornerback or safety. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm so bad with college football. I barely know any of the names at all, but I watch videos on this all the time. And I think definitely all three on defense, I think, yeah, get a pass rusher. I hear a lot about getting a cornerback to go with Slay, which I think would be very, a very good idea. And then I, I want to say, I hear the name. I think his name's Devin Lloyd. I, I forget where he's a goes. linebacker. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I think he's a linebacker. Um, I hear a lot of people saying about how they want him really bad too. And from what I hear, it sounds like he'd be a good fit. But definitely all three on defense. I really don't want to see. Um, I mean, <laughs> I really don't want to see somehow they end up with like they spend their third first round pick on like a quarterback or. Or a wide receiver. I mean, I guess that won't even be that bad. I don't even know how free agency goes, but that would be so annoying if we get another first round wide receiver. Not going to lie, because that's like three years in a row where we spent. They don't. Wide receiver. They don't have to even do that because they. Have... Wait. 
Yeah, I think I think you you broke up a little bit there. Can you can you repeat it again? Yeah. Sorry. I was saying that um I'd be fine with them like using one of the first on like a really good offensive lineman, but they don't need to use it first on a receiver. They could just use one of their other draft picks on a receiver. Yeah, I agree with that. I I I think we should raise hell if we draft another receiver. Yeah, I was gonna say I like what you just said there. Um if there was any offensive position I'd like to see drafted in the first round, it would definitely be an O-line because I mean our O line's getting pretty old at some positions. So especially a center or a replacement for Lane Johnson. So and I know that um in this year's draft class there's a lot of pretty good guards too. I need to get way better with players from college because I'm also really bad at it. And I want to know like the players that are like high prospects and stuff. Cause yeah, but like, I agree. Like we need offensive linemen and defensive players because our biggest weaknesses are coming from that defensive side. And I feel like if we just draft well, I feel like we can elevate our game that the much Eagles more. Just- they need to get some more playmakers on defense. Like they have some solid players on defense, but they need a couple guys that like make make big plays and can change the game. But do you want the Eagles to follow anyone on the defensive side um, and free agency, like possibly trade for a defensive player? Well, I know one free agent that's available is Quandre Diggs. He's on the um, Seahawks. He used to play for the Lions and him and Darius Slayer, like really close friends and stuff. So I think it would be cool if he signed with the Eagles, but it would probably cost a lot because he's like one of the best safeties. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, really not too sure about all the options for free agency and defense. The only one I can really think of, which I actually wouldn't want, would be Von Miller. I know he's a free agent after this year, and I just think he's too old to really bring in and make a super big impact. So I, I personally think the draft is the way to go. I think it's just going to be a really exciting year in free agency with inside the league. And I hope, I think we're going to have a huge off season to elevate our game. I, last question, I swear, but what do you guys think of the Super Bowl? I thought it was a good game. It was um definitely better than a couple of the more recent Super Bowls. Like I thought it was a good game, but I wanted the Bengals to win that game. Yeah, I thought I liked how it was two good, two good stories on both for both teams. It was a good story of how they made it. So I, I thought it was good. I kind of wish it was a little higher scoring. Um, I mean, it still definitely wasn't disappointing. It was good to see Cooper Cup win MVP, and the Super Bowl MVP, and uh, Stafford get his ring. I, yeah, it was it was exciting. It might have been a little bit of a letdown from the hype because I. People were expecting it to be super high scoring, which is, I wouldn't quite say it was, but it was definitely close to the end, which is what a lot of people want. That made it exciting. So Yeah, I wanted the Bengals to win too, but I, I'm just happy that it was at least a close game. And I think this was one of the, or I don't know, I just feel like this is the most heartwarming Super Bowl that I watched where I wasn't really rooting for it a particular team and I wanted both teams to win because like either side like I wanted Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup Aaron Donald to win their first Super Bowls and on the other side I really wanted Joe Burrow to win because that kind of a comeback hit in his only second season um I think it would have been like he won the Natty Heisman and Super Bowl in like the last three years which would have been a crazy stat and but I was just leaning more toward the Bengals, but I'm happy that Matthew Stafford won and the Rams won because they haven't won in a while. I mostly wanted the Bengals just because they they've had a bad team for like so long. And I'm pretty sure they hadn't won a playoff game since like the nineteen nineties before this year. They made it all the way to the Super Bowl, but they lost. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason why it was such a good story for the Bengals. Part of the story too for the Rams that I thought was very underlooked was the fact that they won in their home stadium again, and that's the second year in a row. And that was the first time last year was the first time a team ever played a Super Bowl at their home stadium. It's crazy that it happened two years in a row now. And both teams won. Yeah. Yeah, that is really crazy. Yeah, I just, I think it was, 
a good show or a good Super Bowl <laughs> all around. And also the halftime show was really nice too. I I don't know. I I really liked the halftime show. I think I thought it was exciting to watch. I guess we can end it here. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you for talking sports and Eagles. Um, uh, do you guys want to plug anything really quickly? Um, before I sure I I always usually do this in the beginning of the podcast. I'll probably just cut it and move it in the front. Um, but do you guys want to plug anything first? Yeah, I have um my Instagram account. Antonio underscore Monterito. That's my Instagram. And then I have um a Penguins Instagram too. And yeah, I really, I mean, my personal Instagram account, I don't talk sports, but definitely follow the disgruntled Instagram account. Even <laughs> yeah. though we don't really, even though we don't really post anymore, but yeah, but yeah follow that. We need to start posting on that. And I, I just want to say a quick side note too. I really love your Penguins page too. I showed it to my girlfriend. And she was like, oh, my God, this is so cool because she, like, she's also a Penguins fan as well. And she thought it was really cool. Thank you. You do really good analysis and everything. So, guys, check out Logan's Instagram. Check out Penguins Bias. Check out um, – I'll put all the links in the bio too. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Um, bye. Bye. Thank good you. See you. Yeah, thanks for having me.